Hello, and welcome to episode 62 of the Physique Development Podcast. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about a thief. Well, the thief of joy, that is. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you could have the word comparison pop into your head, and that is exactly what we are going to be going over today, going over how social media enhances this as well as it just being a highlight reel. Um, We'll even possibly go into comparison in regards to bodybuilding because I know a lot of you guys have been following along with my personal prep journey or some of the other podcasts that we've put out on first-time competitors, how to be a supportive spouse and a few more like that. So we'll go ahead and dive into this a little bit here. Yeah. Do do you want to get started with kind of how comparison is going to uh, affect things from a life perspective? Or do you feel like getting into like the different ways that comparison can kind of creep into your life first? Uh, I think creeping into your life and then how that affects you long term, because I think it's very easy to be in a space where you compare yourself or comparison pops up and it's kind of like, okay, that happens, but it does have a pretty heavy impact on your life and what that looks like. So being able to look at how it creeps in also goes to what we'll talk about as far as how to change that thief coming in and stealing that joy from you. So being able to learn about how that seeps in will be helpful. Yeah. I mean, how do you see it most in your life? I think that the place that I see it the most, and especially with how much we're on our computer from a day-to-day standpoint, is going to be stemming from um, the internet slash social media. I feel like social media is going to be the biggest. And um, I would say that also the the news cycle of things. So individuals who uh, like follow sports, watch Sports Center to get caught up on the, the games that happened the night before because you weren't able to stay up because you're on Eastern Standard Time and the games happened on the West Coast and you're trying to stay up and your wife wants to go to sleep for the basketball games. It's crazy. I don't know anybody that's lived <laughs> like that. Um, but in that scenario, you only get to see the highlight reels of those players and you feel as though that the game was like swimmingly well for all those players. They didn't miss a shot. And then the next night you watch them play and you actually get to watch the full game because you're watching it in the basement and your wife goes to sleep. I don't know anybody that lives like that either. And you get to watch the full game and you get to see that same player shoot a couple air balls, create a couple turnovers or give up a couple turnovers. You're like, oh, they're not actually perfect. It's just simply that I got to see a highlight reel of what that game really was like. So um, where do you see it the most in your life? Just the access that we have more than anything. And it's, it's exactly what you said within the media and social media. When you have extreme access to people, there's so much more to compare to. And it is so prevalent in today's society because we have access to everyone and everything, it seems. And Alex and I have had a lot of conversations about this, of looking at sports stars years ago before social media was so prevalent, of they were treated like movie stars, someone like Michael Jordan, where he was in these ads and people would come to these parades and these rallies. And they loved these sports stars because they were only seeing them on the court and then at these events. They knew nothing else about their lives. And now you can follow any sports star on social media and know the ins and outs of everything. And so whether you're comparing positively or negatively, you have extreme access in order to garner that comparison. And so the access, I think, is one of the biggest things that we just have so much access to so many people's lives. It's so easy to just compare, compare, compare. Right. And I think that an easy thing for us to kind of look at here, especially from a bodybuilding standpoint, is that never before social media did an individual have access to this many other competitors that they could see competing, right? You would be able to see maybe some pictures on a forum or you'd be able to see pictures like even, I guess even before online, you were just, you were just bodybuilding because you loved it. And you maybe saw other people at your gym who were competing, but you could not see the, the, quantity of other competitors because it with this you've got millions of other competitors that you can see and it's going to be very very likely with that amount of access to find individuals who are better than you or have better body parts than you better ratios than you all these different things and so it's very easy to uh, knock yourself down because you see all these other individuals where in reality it's like all these people always had existed it's it's they're not just coming out of nowhere it's now we just have access to all of them and so 
it didn't stop the people before because they didn't have access to it. But now having access to it, it plays a role in in the the psyche of the athlete to continue to push forward and continue to not be in this place of comparison of like, well, that person's already done it. And uh, since they've already done it, I feel silly. I feel like I'm copying them or I feel like I can't do it because they've already done it or, or whatever it is. It, it's something that, um, I mean, especially with the access that we continue to talk to, it's painfully prevalent. Yeah. And it's that highlight reel. And it's like the highlight of the games that you're seeing. And it's comparing your lesser qualities to someone else's best qualities. Or another way to say it is you're comparing someone's outsides to your insides. What I find coming up the most is I spend the most time with myself. I I don't know how anyone would spend more time with me than me, but I do spend the most time with myself. And with that, I hear and know every thought I have. I know every angle of my body that I've ever caught in a mirror or a camera or anything like that. I also know all of the worst qualities about myself. I know everything. And so I look at that and I see someone else of what they've chosen to share. And it's so freaking easy to be like, well, they don't struggle with that or their life is perfect or I can't believe they look this way and I look like this. So I shouldn't even try. And all this myriad of thoughts just dump into you because again, you know yourself the most intimately and you have spent the most time with yourself. And oftentimes you hear people say, oh, I'm my own worst critic, which can be helpful. But in this realm, you are now criticizing every thought, feeling, and emotion that you've had because you are seeing a perception of someone else and pouring that out of your brain onto that person, having that judgment towards yourself and just comparing constantly. So it's something that can be so hard because, again, you have extreme access and you have have extreme access to yourself and how you view yourself, and then you take both of those, pair it with a highlight reel, it can be quite the mental mind fuck. Yeah. I mean, it, it becomes very challenging just because of those components that you bring up. I think that um, especially having the amount of access that we have for ourselves, it becomes a challenge because you're only seeing that one bit of the other person. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how it affects your life. I mean, it leads to unhappiness and low self-esteem. It also leads to that thought process of not being good enough because you see everyone else achieving or doing or whatever it may be, what you want to do can lead to jealousy, frustration, hopelessness, anxiety, depression. Um, and it can also lead to you ending up picking apart other people more. Of course, it can lead to you picking yourself apart, but it can lead to you picking apart other people to make yourself feel better. So you start picking at other people's um, faults, and then it can also lead to that negativity bias of really um, confirming to yourself negativities you already had, and then pushing that from that perception that you're getting from someone else. Yeah, and I think that one big thing um, that I've at least noticed within myself and, and people around me is that the uh, point of like the aspect of comparison push, pushes them into a, a place of wanting to be in the shadows where it's like it's easier to not really be um, like putting myself out there and just like sticking back and so even if i i do kind of like fall on my face it's okay because like no one's really paying attention mm -hmm. and and like i didn't really try like i i kind of tried but i'm giving the safety net of like well if I don't try super hard, then it's okay. Like I, I'm, I'm back behind here and that allows for me to be in like this comfort zone. And, and once you realize that getting out and like letting that comparison transpire and um, like to other people, I suppose, and putting yourself out there and realizing that even if you do fall on your face, it's for like a microsecond, especially with how fast everything happens. Like you fall on your face, it happens. Uh, you know, some people take notice, some don't. And then it's like, an hour later, most people have forgotten mm -hmm. type situation. And I think that many people think, especially in their mind of like how they think of themselves, it's like, well, I fell on my face and now all I'm thinking about is the aspect that I fell on my face and that just lingers for weeks. Whereas like anybody who is probably watching you saw it either like offered you a word of wisdom or offered you a, a word of um, like trying to help in general. And then there may be a small percentage of, of 
crappy people who send it in a group text to their crappy friends and make fun of you or something along those yeah. lines. That's a reality. That's that's going to happen as time goes on. Like as much as I would love to sit here and say that those people don't exist, we all very much so know that they do exist. Um, and so allowing for yourself or like realizing that for majority of people, it's only in their mind for like an hour and then it's moving on. And then you, they'd have to be reminded that it happened. They're not thinking about it again. Yeah, I think it's honestly helpful to have a little bit of short term memory um, in these regards, because I think it's so easy to have those thoughts or comments stick. So even for example of someone putting a negative comment, I think something for myself, especially with you saying like it's easier to stay in the shadows, I've enjoyed having a quote smaller platform on social media because everyone is positive. I don't get a lot of negative comments, which is very nice for me because I I don't, not that I don't do well with negative comments, but I know it hurts my self-esteem. I know mentally I'm still working through some of those things. And I have even vocalized, like, I don't want to go viral because I know that there's going to be trolls that come and pick me apart. And I don't know if I'm in a headspace to take all of that on and have my own confidence to kind of push through that. And so within that, it's also been something where I like you said, don't give my full effort. And then I I don't achieve what I want to achieve and I feel frustrated about it. But it's also this aspect of I might get one comment here and there that's negative and it sticks in my head for a few weeks where it's like not everyone is thinking that. That was one comment and I should be able to have enough understanding and worth in myself to not let that affect me. Now, that would be the very logical way of thinking. I am not always logical. Sometimes I'm emotional, as you guys have found out more from YouTube and this podcast that I am a crier. But it is something that like those moments stick in your head. But like Alex said, it's a microsecond for other people. If you were to think of, oh, what are so-and-so's most embarrassing moments? Even if I were to think of what Alex's most embarrassing moments are, I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head of, oh, yeah, I remember this one time. You made a complete full. I I don't know. I could not recall one. And I'm sure he's already thinking of like, oh, I could think of this, this, and this. That was so embarrassing. I'm his wife. I spend the most time with him outside of the time I spend with myself. I don't even know his most embarrassing moments to recall off the very top of my head. So what does that say about someone random on the internet or someone random in your life? And if they do stick to those things and they feel like they need to bring it up, then also being able to understand like that person lives a very sad life and then moving on from that is like the best that I can say it of just like your life is sad. I'm going to keep living my life. You keep being sad and everything will be okay. Right. I, I think that when you surround yourself with individuals who are wanting to be better and, and wanting to improve upon themselves and, and create better lives for those around them, you realize that none of them are really talking about other people. I know that we have, like, there's so many quotes that kind of um, get kind of viral, like around and that kind of thing. But truthfully, like I always, when I see those quotes, like that you're the uh, the sum of the five people that you were around and those different aspects until that, till those things change changed for me, that I was actually around people who were wanting better for themselves and wanting better for the people around them, did I realize that that was truly the case, that once you're surrounded by those kind of people, you realize how much you can elevate those around you and elevate yourself. And the same goes for the five, the sum of the five people that you're around most. Like Those things really do matter. And I know that some of you may be listening are like, no, 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 I'm in my own lane. And I think that that's part of it too, is that there was a, an aspect of my life where I, when those statements were made to me, I was in my own lane. The people that I was surrounded by maybe weren't on that same pursuit, but I was kind of breaking out of a, a previous habit or a previous lifestyle, if you will. And at that time, that quote did not reign true. But once you have kind of broken out of that and into a, a new chapter or a new realm of your life, those things do become true. And so you may be in that phase where you're trying to break out of maybe a, you know, a previous group of friends or a previous chapter of your life. 
Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah, and that's something that we've talked about a few times, even on a walk that we had the other day, of just saying that my life is so much better because of the people that I currently surround myself with. And a lot of the things I fell victim to or really struggled with, like, five years ago, don't even enter the chat, so to speak, because I'm not surrounded by those types of people that are either pulling me down, don't want what's best for me, they talk behind other people's back, all of that. I have people in my life that support me, that encourage me, that motivate me to be better. And like Alex said, they're not just sitting around talking about other people. And so I don't have that mentality as much anymore because I don't even allow it to get into the circle of the people at all. No one does. And so it's basically like this barrier keeping it out because my conversations and my life isn't consumed by those things because the people I'm around aren't consumed by those things. Right. And and you'll, you'll realize that the most successful individuals like within the the game of comparison find themselves in a scenario where they're able to keep the blinders on and just be focused on what they believe in and what they um, believe to be true. Like within the task that they're doing. They just stay within the the task at hand and do the, just check things off on a day-to-day basis and find themselves in a scenario where it's like, I don't really care what anyone around me is doing. I know that this is important to me and this is what I want to do. And I'm just going to stay on this. And I know that if I continue these tasks every single day, day in and day out for the next 10 years of my life, like truly having a vision that far ahead of yourself and putting yourself in a scenario where it's like, I don't care what happens in three months. I don't care what happens in six months, a year, two years. All I'm going to do is just continue these tasks and get better at these tasks for 10 years. And I know that if I keep this up, it doesn't matter what anyone around me is doing, I'm going to be successful. Yeah, I love that because it is... It's true, point blank, but it's also something where when I was thinking about this topic, we are going to talk about it in regards to body and comparing yourself to yourself and all of these different aspects. But I was like, I don't remember or it's not consuming my thoughts who I regularly compare myself to or break myself down from because I feel like I am so busy and so focused on a day-to-day basis. I don't have time to compare myself to others. I have time to just check the next thing off my list. So that's something. And it takes a while to get there. Yeah, like, oh, for sure. Like when I talk to to newer coaches, like within our, within our, um, within our mentorship, where I'm working with a lot of younger coaches who are just getting started um, and they're wanting to learn, you know, about the aspect of online coaching. And oftentimes they come and they see, especially on social media, where you're getting hit with ads from the um, the business coaches and those different factors where it's like, make 10K in your first 30 days of coaching. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's not the goal. I understand that the, there's uh, you know a financial component to provide for your family and and create a living for yourself. But at the same time, we're taking care of people's health. We're wanting to create a sustainable lifestyle for for individuals long term and create impact for them that uh, is long lasting. And I think that that's the that has to be the root of what you're doing. And I know that for me, especially starting out, like I wanted to just you know, be able to pay my bills and those different aspects and being able to have that. And I get the the rush for having the money. Mm-hmm. I get I get that aspect. But at the same time, the only way that the money comes is that you're really good at the at the job. Mm-hmm. And so by not comparing yourself and just being like, yo, I'm gonna do this for 10, like just continuing to repeat yourself. I still do this for myself now, eight years into it. Yeah. Like I'm still re- repeating to myself, like if I can keep this up for 10 years, I know that we will never lose. Like no matter what happens this week, no matter if this post does well or that this client does well or anything like that, I'm just going to continue to do my best every day and cross everything off the list. And if I do that for 10 years, I'll win. Yeah. 
And as the popular quote is that comparison is the thief of joy, it's the thief of a lot more than just joy. It's a thief of your time and your mental headspace. Because when I think back to when I first started coaching, and if we're staying on this example, I would compare myself to everyone, what everyone else's offer was, what everyone else was doing, what I needed to do, all of that. And again, there are benefits to comparison that we will get to. But I was constantly spending my time comparing myself. And now when I look at them and try to compare those two times in my life, I don't have the time to sit and compare because again, I'm just getting the tasks done. And I know that there's so many things that are on my list of things I want to do and want to accomplish within our business that I just need to keep taking the step in front of another. I don't need to look at, oh, what is everyone else doing? We have a whole list of things that, hey, once we get over these few projects, Projects, we're going on to this, this, and this. Once we get over this and have more capacity, we're going on to this, this, and this. And that could all be subject to change, but I just have my eye on the prize and I'm going after what I want. And that's the biggest thing with comparison. If you get stuck in comparison, and I'm not perfect, I still do it. But if you let it absolutely consume you, you will be wasting so much time in your life that you could actually be a accomplishing something. And so if you truly want to know my bare opinions on how to beat comparison, keep working harder, keep going, keep showing up, and keep doing it for you. That's my brute, honest, to the point, what I would say if you're like, well, I'm struggling with comparison. All right, go ahead and do a self-audit. When was the last time you showed up for yourself 100% and did the task at hand that you wanted to accomplish? Okay, now I'm pretty sure a lot of you were like, oh crap, I haven't done that because you were spending too much time comparing yourself to someone else. Right, and I think that's something that I repeat to our clients and and the coaches that we work with. I think that... um, look like auditing more so what you need to improve upon like what are some of the things that maybe you're being uh like self-conscious of of that person is is accomplishing well why is that making you feel uncomfortable because are you not spending enough time potentially studying are you half-assing the training that you're saying that you're full-assing um (laughs) are you you know, not putting focus on these things. And like, there may be a reason that that comparison makes you feel uncomfortable because you may not be putting in enough time into that aspect of your business or within your personal life or what have you. That may be something and it may need to be addressed. And so putting more time into those things will in turn improve the confidence within that aspect and potentially put you in a position where you're not doing that any longer. Yeah. So that's going into exactly what to talk about is like what to do, like the breakdown instead of the sue direct to the point, like just keep freaking working of what to do when you are struggling with comparison. And the first thing is to identify your thoughts, to sit and reflect with yourself because you can't fix what you're not aware of. What gets measured gets managed. And when you truly sit with those uncomfortable thoughts, so let's go ahead, throw throw a comparison someone might have out there. On the spot. Um, like a, like in what facet? Just you know what? I'll <laughs> a just... comparison in like total, like general context. I mean, it could be literally anything. Yeah. Throw it out. <laughs> I'll break it apart. It's too broad. Give me like a at least a basic of a topic to talk on. Um coaching. Um I don't have the same results. Like they have better results than what I do. All right. So if you're comparing the results that another coach is having to yours, go ahead and sit with your thoughts for a second and identify, all right, what am what is this thought truly meaning for me? Is it because I struggle with confidence and I don't have belief in myself? Am I putting in enough time with the studying? Am I putting in enough application? Have I taken enough time to get these client results? Am I being patient? Like truthfully, self-auditing yourself is going to be the biggest thing. So sit and identify your thoughts. And then the next one is going to be to assess your thoughts. And so are the stories that you're telling yourself yourself even true. So let's take another comparison of let's say Joe Schmo goes on a trip and you're like, well, they just are always traveling and their life is better than mine. 
okay, first, are they always traveling? They could be, but are they? And is their life truly better than yours? And what metric or ruler are you measuring that against? Because that's different for each and every person. Someone else might think a full life is traveling all the time, and that's completely okay. Again, we have all different rulers that we measure things on. So are the stories you're telling yourself true? Is it a negative thought? Is it serving you? So you want to turn your um, thoughts into a dialogue instead of a monologue because we have this one-way thinking where we sit there and we're like, this is the truth. I thought this. It's the truth. I'm going to run with it. But you need to be able to roll that back and think, is this true? Is this serving me? Is this helpful? Where is this coming from? And it, maybe it's coming from a massive insecurity of yours or maybe it's coming from a lie that you've let yourself tell yourself for years and years. Or maybe it's coming from a kernel of truth that you're not doing enough and that you need to show up more for yourself. So being able to identify and assess and reflect and then being able to replace your thoughts because you can train your brain. I mean, as humans, we are basically meant to compare. There was a study done in 1954 um, by Leon Festinger and it was a social comparison theory. And essentially we compare ourselves to others in order to give ourselves a benchmark to evaluate ourselves, which I think is so valid. I do that all the time of like, where is this benchmark in regards to where I am and what do I need to do to get to the next benchmark? Now, in the past, I didn't think that way. I thought this person is doing better than me. I just suck. But now I'm able to think, all right, they're doing this where am I at and what do I want to get to and how can I use that to push myself forward? So while it is the nature of humans to compare, you also get the opportunity to rewire your thoughts of how you let those culminate in your life and like show up in your life. Right. Comparison can be something where, and especially this is something that Sue and I have talked about, is that when we're looking at comparison or learning from other individuals, because that's a, a very important piece of comparison that's positive, where, um, you know, get, like burning your hand on a stove, I can watch someone and put myself in their shoes. I guess that would be a form of comparison of like, they burn their hand. I don't need to go up there and touch that stove to burn <laughs> my hand as well. Like I can, I can know like that's hot. I don't need to do that. And so that's a, a big part of also expediting the learning process in general, where you don't have to try everything. You can watch other people and realize like, oh man, there's no reason to try that. That sounds and looks really stupid. I'm probably not going to do that. Um, so that's another, like, I guess, form of comparison that is in a positive pursuit uh, as a whole, but also when you're utilizing comparison and trying to use it in a positive manner, really ensure that you're looking at the same chapters of, of life. Like if you're a first time competitor, looking at an Olympian and being like, oh, I do not have her glutes. Her delts are crazy. I don't have that. What's the point? It's like, dog, she's been competing for and, and training for a decade plus. You literally just started. Why are you looking at that individual and thinking that you're going to just automatically be there after six months of hitting your food and training kind of hard? Like it, it's, it's a completely different comparison. You have to find people. If you're going to go that route of like, where's my benchmark? There has to be, you have to find in that context, another new competitor that's just started training as well. And then at that point, it's like, okay, we're on an even playing field. I can actually see where maybe I'm better or where she's better, but there's things that we can be kind of competitive with one another to push ourselves forward. And that may be a good training partner for you to elevate one another in those different aspects. So like comparison being a very positive thing there as well. Yeah. And that's something where when you are looking at those, I mean, you've heard the quote of like, don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter seven, but it's true. Maybe you're a new coach and you're like, physique development is the best. And you're right. But maybe you're comparing yourself to us and being like, well, they have such a good production. They're so smart. They get the best client results, which again, are all true. But in that sense, we were not this good 
one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago. So if you are comparing yourself to us, trust me, we were not even here those different times in our journey to get to this point. And I like I'm very confident in saying that because you don't know what you don't know. And so you start off and you work really hard and you get to that point, but you can't expect that to happen overnight. But I will say that like I'll speak for myself in the sense that I was this good before I was this good in my mind more so. Like I believed in myself getting started much beyond what I was capable of at that moment. Like when I really started to believe in myself of what I was capable of within coaching and getting the results that I knew I could get clients and competitors in those different aspects, when I believed, and if I was to really say that out loud and, and speak that to individuals, they'd probably be like, eh, not yet, man. And they would have been totally right. But I knew at that point that, again, going back to the 10-year the view thing of it, I already had that vision and I knew that I could get there. It was just a matter of continuing to do the day-to-day -day task. And so you have to believe in yourself that you're capable of those things far, far, far before it actually happens. Because if you're waiting for you to be capable to then believe in yourself, you'll never be capable of achieving that thing. You have to have that internal belief well before that time truly comes. Yeah, and I, that's a huge thing I wanna chalk on was confidence itself. If you want to get out of comparing yourself, it comes from also having confidence. And this is something I'm personally, like confidence is something I'm really working on. I remember for um, New Year's this year, we went out with my sister and Alex was getting the car and my sister and I were standing at the restaurant waiting for him to pull up. And she said, like, do you have any resolutions this year as we were just waiting? And I was like, confidence. And she was taken aback by it of just being like, you're one of the most confident people I know. But internally, I struggle with confidence. And that's something that I've really tried to push forward and tried to learn and lean into because I know what a game changer it is. And again, another walk conversation that we had. We have a lot of great conversations on walks. If you are married and you feel like you need to enhance your relationship, go on a lot of walks together. I promise you, you'll have some great conversation. Um, well, I guess I can't promise you that. You have to do some of that yourself. But uh, within that, I was talking to Alex and I was trying to learn from a situation. And I was like, the thing is, is that anyone who is successful, anyone that I look up to or anyone that I've read about or learned about their story, it comes from this insane self-belief and this insane confidence that they are going to make it, that it is going to be worth it, that they know what they're doing, that it, it's all going to happen. And I see that. And when you see trends like that of, hey, all of these extremely successful people that I look up to all have the same story of I had extreme self-confidence or I had extreme belief in myself or I just did it anyways because I knew what would I knew what was capable of happening then in my mind there's no there that is a complete exact correlation of that confidence and self-belief to being able to be successful. I don't know someone who is uber successful that's not also confident in their skills or what they're doing. And in saying that, though, they can be confident, but also be like, I don't know what is going on. Mm -hmm. Like they can have a lot of self-confidence. And, and I think that that's you know, kind of where we're at right now, where we are uh, doing the daily task and believe in what the vision is long term. But I will say very confidently as well that each day I'm like, I have no idea if it's like for sure the right thing, but I believe it to be in my core and I'm just going to go ahead and do it to the best ability that I can. And then if something changes, then I will, I will uh, pivot and just continue to push forward. Yeah, and that comes from a little bit of um, just like that second guessing yourself and going through it. Again, we don't know exactly what we don't have the perfect roadmap to how do we get this to exactly meet our mission or our vision, but we do have at the time and the knowledge that we have in this situation, this is the best decision I can make. And we make that decision and move forward. And Alex has helped me a ton with that because I used to go back and forth. I was very indecisive. He'll probably laugh a little bit and say, you're still indecisive. <laughs> it's much um, better. <laughs> but I would go back and forth, try to weigh the options, which is beneficial to a point. But I would just like kill myself with indecisiveness. And he was like, make the best decision 
decision with the best information that you have at this point and also understand that you can change that when you get new information. Not all everything we do is so finite of you made this decision, you can never change it, never go back on it, never alter your thoughts on it. That would be a very bad world to live in uh, that I would not want to be a part of. But it's something that I can change and learn and grow. And also I can admit when I was wrong and still learn from that and move forward instead of saying, well, Yasu, you were a failure and that was the wrong decision and you should have weighed the options more. No, I made the best decision with the best information I had at that time. And now I realize that wasn't the best decision, but that's hindsight. So all I can do is apologize, admit that I was wrong and make the next best decision that I think there is. Right. And and I think that especially in today's world where people can go back 10 years and pick apart a tweet or a post that was made and be like, this person's a terrible person, that gets challenging to not mm-hmm. like over analyze in those different aspects. And I, I was listening to a podcast uh, with Snoop Dogg. I'm a big fan of Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. And um, he was asked if he would change any of his original music back in the, the 90s of how he spoke about women and, and those different aspects. Like it wasn't good, right? But at the time, it was the life that he lived. It was the uh, you know, circumstances that he was around and he just talked about his life where, so he was saying that I would not change it. Now I live a different life. Now I speak about women differently. I treat women differently, but at that time that was my truth. And I think that that's an important place to come from of like, yo, this is, I'm just speaking my truth for this immediate moment. I'm not married to this thought. If I get new information and I'm, and I know that I was wrong, I'm willing to say that I was wrong and, and move forward from it. And the people around you should be able to give you enough grace of like, yo, people can change, people can improve, they can alter the way that they think and and the way that they go about things. Like people can do that. And uh, like, and I think that we're like on a pendulum act, like aspect of things, we're getting back to a place of like, greater grace, Mm -hmm. at least from my perspective. And I think that that's, it can be wishful thinking. Some of you may be listening like, dog, that is wishful as I'll get out. But I would prefer to believe that that's the case relative to it being like, you are married to every thought that you've ever had of your entire life. And we can basically um, cancel you if anything you've said. Yeah. And you can train your mind just like you can train your body. And if you guys would like a podcast on that, then definitely let us know because that's one that I had written down as far as like the most important body part or muscle that you're not training regularly. And that's your mind because you can choose what you do with those thoughts. And I talked about it in the show day vlog of you get to choose what happens once thoughts come up. And this was something I struggled with for a while is I would have a thought and then be like, Sue, you're a bad person for having that thought because it would just pop up and I'd be like, why are you having that thought? That was a bad thought, but, or a negative thought, whatever it may be. But you can't always control what pops up, but you can control what you do with it next, which was so instrumental for me to learn because I had all of this guilt and frustration of like these first thoughts that popped up. And then now I realize I get to decide what happens next with that thought. Do I throw that thought away and say sayonara? Or do I sit on that thought, kind of think about why it came up? Or do I immediately change my thinking? And this also helps when when it comes to comparison, if you start to compare yourself, you can switch that thinking right away. And I will have to sit there and sometimes verbally speak out loud to myself to stop that. If I start seeing it happen and I'll be like, Sue, that's not the truth. This is not the case. You need to change your thought, change your mindset, change your life, you know, do all of those things. So it doesn't always matter what the first thought you have is. It matters what you do with that thought or what the thought are past that thought. Absolutely. If you are a, a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. 
Yeah. So um, obviously, we've talked about gaining confidence can really help with comparison because a lot of comparison stems from insecurity or things that you need to assess within your own life. Um, focusing on bettering yourself. That's been a, the hugest thing for me of instead of looking externally for everything, I look at how can I get better from this situation. I know Alex does the same. Um, and then you can train your mind as well, which is very helpful. Um, but you can also be aware of what those triggers are for you and try to limit and or avoid them. So we can talk on that a little bit further. Yeah, because I don't think that it's a, a tenfold of like, I should have avoid all the triggers that I have. Mm -hmm. Like there needs to be some level of addressing because sometimes when those those triggers present themselves, they could be something in which those need to be faced head on because the the thing that's like, I'll, I'll speak for myself, like putting myself out there and being willing to like, I we, we share a lot of information. We share a lot of information around training and nutrition and those different aspects. And I want to be a positive influence on that and all, always a correct influence on those things. And so one of my biggest like internal fears up until really this year was like giving information that was not correct. And I would have a lot of anxiety around information and I would like triple check things that I was posting of like, is this correct? Am I 100% correct? I'm, I'm checking all of my main sources of information that I would be pulling uh, data from, studies from, and ensuring that what I'm saying is 100% correct. And anytime that someone like brought something you know up with it, I would immediately like my heart would drop because I felt like I was letting the people down as well as now I'm embarrassed because I maybe said something incorrectly. And in this time frame, I've been able to really overcome that of like, yo, I'm doing the best that I can. And if the information is incorrect, I'm sorry. And I'm willing to to admit that I'm wrong and that um I'm willing to change those thoughts and I understand where you're coming from and I appreciate you sharing that with me, but I was always so fixated on always being right because of it being information that's shared and people take that information and immediately run with it because they trust what I have to say. And I, I think that I've gotten to such a better place in my own, like my own internal dialogue with that. And that was something that I could have just avoided. I could have just stopped sharing in general. Well, that would have really hurt our business. Mm -hmm. And, Very much so. Glad and you didn't do that. Would, would have been something where I wasn't showing up for myself. I was running from something that I needed to face head on to be a better version of myself. And um, like in that scenario, I would encourage you just to, to face it head on, get through the discomfort and and allow for yourself to really feel those emotions, be honest with yourself and and you know push through them. Yeah, and I think that's a really helpful way to look at something that you were able to reflect and understand why you felt that way versus for avoiding certain things. I also want to point out that there is a benefit or there is a um, situation that might come up where avoidance is the best. Now, exposure therapy, there's a reason that they truly use that in therapy because exposure is helpful to get past something. But let's say that there is someone who is an extremely toxic friend in your life. They are not willing to change. They do not want to change. They are constantly being negative. That's something that you can be like, snip, snap, peace out. I'm going to catch you later. You don't need to expose yourself to someone being so negative in your face just to get past negativity in general. Now, you might need to reflect and see if there's truth to what they're saying or whatever it may be, but it's also something like gossip channels. I don't personally get on any of those. I don't get on anything like Reddit. I don't get on any of those things. That is something that there is no positive of me reading what other people just want to say in their free time because most of the time it is it holds no weight. Now, not that I've never been on any of those sites, but after being on them just a handful of times, I very quickly realized what was serving me versus what wasn't serving me. It is not helpful to go and read every negative comment that somebody in what, whatever town they're located See, feels like they can speak about you. So that's something where you can very easily realize, hey, a trigger is whenever I get on Reddit and search my name, I end up feeling awful about myself. I can avoid Reddit. I can also reflect on if there's any truth in what someone is saying and what I need to do about it. So there is a 
situ- it is very situational of like, you need to expose yourself and address this head on. And then there's, you need to realize that this is not serving you and you don't need it in your life at this moment. And then there's also times where you need to look at just limiting them. So social media is a big one there. And I think that this is something that a lot of us can relate to. When you start your day or before you've gotten on social media for the day, assess how your mood is, how you feel about yourself, all of that. If you are someone who scrolls social media, after scrolling, do you feel better about yourself, worse about yourself, and a worse mental headspace? Like, what does that look like for you? And then being able to say, all right, I'm going to put these parameters on social media to best serve me, whether that's muting certain accounts, unfollowing certain accounts, not engaging in certain things, or just simply saying, I'm not going to scroll, Um, whatever it may be, that's going to be a very good example of, hey, how can I help myself in this comparison trap of, hey, instead of being tempted by it all the time, why don't I just take half that time away? It's not going to be as hard if that's the situation. Right. And I think that also like in the aspect of comparison, being able to flip that comparison as motivation in the sense of like, they did it, I can do it type situation rather than being like, oh my gosh, I, I, I hate them because they did it. And like, I'll never be able to do that where it's like the, uh, the individual who's has done it is, is, um, what is this, uh, like a, a testimonial that it's possible more mm-hmm. so. And so you're using that as, as motivation. And also like, that's one of the things that from, uh, like I would say over the last really 10 years that I have done within like my friends of, of having people around me that bring out the best in me, but also motivate me of like, yo, they've been able to do this and I admire that so much. And I think that this is so cool that they've been able to do it. It also means that I can do it and that they are are living testament that it's possible and I can, you know, find my own path of, of success just like they did type situation. And that's exactly how I started coaching. Truthfully, I saw other people be successful and I started a YouTube channel. I got made fun of for it and I got roasted for it by everyone in my life at that time. But I saw people making money doing something they loved and I thought, why not me? Instead of sitting there bitter and frustrated and picking them apart, again, that's something that happens with comparison is you start picking someone else apart because of their success or because you feel bad about yourself. I looked at it and I thought, if they can do it, I can freaking do it. I started my YouTube channel, started things on Instagram, started coaching, and I was able to create a life doing something that I was extremely passionate about because I compared myself to someone else and I saw that they could do it. And so again, why not me? And I used that as a catalyst for change instead of allowing it to completely break me down and letting myself be bitter because they had something I didn't have. Yeah. Uh, So something else that can really help within comparison is really taking time to ground yourself and have gratefulness. Oftentimes when it comes to comparison, you are coming from that place. Like I said, there's jealousy, there's hopelessness, there's frustration, there's this not being good enough, all of that. But it's something that if you take time to reflect on what good is happening in your life, that's really going to help you. And this is something I personally stand by because in the past 20 weeks, I've been extremely consistent with doing a gratefulness list every morning. And I think that they can be helpful morning and night, honestly. And Alex and I try to share like our wins for the day or talk about our day at the end of each day, because that again goes towards, I am grateful for this. And you think more about what you do have instead of thinking about what you don't have. So you can flip your screen flip the script and train your brain in that way as well. Yeah. And I think that having a accountability partner in this aspect of, as you're trying to get into the routine of speaking about the things that you're grateful for or the things that you accomplish throughout the day of, of having a friend, a significant other, anything like that, uh, a sibling, a parent that you're just conversing with on a day-to-day basis, especially if you, uh, like, let's say you live alone. I I know that that can be challenging in the, in the aspect of like, you're just kind of sitting in silence all day. If you're not going out and doing things that are social, you just aren't getting to talk a whole lot. So, um, 
calling your your mom, calling your dad, calling a sibling to really touch base on these things can be very helpful. Yeah. And that's another thing I had written down was celebrate others because they will celebrate you in return. And that really helps with building you up of being so excited to tell someone like, hey, I did this. And Alex being like, great job, honey. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, I am great. That was awesome. We like we need those affirmations. So whether it's that affirmation that you give to yourself or you get that from an outside source, also share that with other people and affirm what other people are doing and celebrate their success. Going back to our friend group, that's something we all heavily do. We are all extremely invested and positive for the other person's success. And so there's not this uh, underlying negative um, comparison going on because there's no negative in return. So if someone does something really great, they're not like, well, what are you guys doing? It's more of like celebrating what each person's wins are and pushing that forward. So it's that positive comparison that Alex talked about that all of my friends, I compare myself to become better and I see what they're doing and I use that as a benchmark. I use that as a catalyst. And it's so great because it's this positive circle of everyone cheering everyone on. So then you're not dealing with all of these insecurities on top top of that because everyone just wants the best for the other people. Right. And I'll uh, I'll use an example within our friends. I'll use Brandon. Shout out <laughs> G-Code. Uh, Shout out. <laughs> and I think that like Sue and I have talked about this of, of each friend providing something that you admire so much within them that they pull out you being better in that aspect as well. So something there's a, a myriad of things that Brandon pulls out of me from just being a, a better man in general. But the the one thing that I admire so much about him is that his self confidence and also his uh, ability to not care what anyone thinks. He's just going to speak his mind is something that he's pulled out of me over the last however many years it's been. Of like I was very very um, cautious with everyone around me. Of like I was was going to make sure that everyone else was like heard, but it didn't matter that I was heard. Like it didn't matter that I was, I got to say what I wanted to say, just like everybody got what they wanted more so. And Brandon has very much so challenged me within the way that he carries himself and also pulling it out of me of like, no, speak up. Like, what do you want to say? Um, that's like something that I admire a bunch out of him. And you can find those little details within your own friends of like, they have this attribute or, or something that they carry within their personality that, um, is significantly better than what you do. It's not that, oh, I'm jealous because he does that. Like I use that as motivation for me to be better in that aspect of my life as well. Yeah. And even talking about speaking up, we've had meetings where we get off of them and I'm like, Alex, you don't really speak. And he'll say something like, well, you talked the whole time or you steamrolled it. And that definitely has happened. I have been known to commandeer a conversation. But within that, he also, with being around Brandon more, knows that there's truth in what he's saying about me. But there's also truth of if he wants to get in there, go ahead, stick your dick in there and talk if you really want to talk. And so it's been cool to see that from that because we've had conversations on it of instead of being like, well, Brandon just says whatever's on his mind and I just can't do that or that's not my tendency. It's been so incredible to see you really step up and become more you, again, having more of that confidence to speak out, to show up, to do these other things. And it has reflected on everything in our life and our business and so many other things. And so being able to have that of that wasn't ever a negative thing holding in the air of like Brandon speaks his mind. It all pushed us to be better and speak up for what we want to do. And you do have to have like-minded people to be able to do that. But it's also something of truly being able to look at someone else's strength. And instead of tearing yourself apart or tearing them apart, looking at how can I also make that my strength or how can I become better at that um, or looking, oh, what are the strengths that they see in me? And we'll even vocalize those to each other so everyone can feel loved and heard, so to speak, of just like, hey, these things that you do really encourage or motivate me because that's so helpful to hear. And I try to vocalize that to Alex of either I'm really proud of you for this or you doing this showed me this or I look up to you for this thing instead of just keeping it all in my head, why not tell him the things that are really powerful that he's doing so that 
He can keep being powerful. I can keep pulling power from that in a positive way, not taking it, pulling from it and like using that to push us both up instead of just like keeping it to myself and trying to get the upper hand and all, all of those other things within comparison that cause all that friction. I don't feel like there's friction. There's just excitement for the other person. Yeah, and I think that that's something that I got better with within our our marriage in general. Like when we first got married, I was not vocalizing those things at all to you. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, you were vocalizing those things to me, but I certainly was not reciprocating those things. Not because I didn't believe that to be the case, but more so, it, it was probably an insecurity on my end to give anyone else their their flowers more so um, to like always have the upper hand. I feel like that was kind of like my mm -hmm. my demeanor or where my mindset was at you know, five years ago. And that's been something that you have helped me with abundantly of just being able to give others praises. It doesn't take away from the the praise that you have or the attributes that you have to give others their, their flowers and those different aspects. And I think that that comes with time and, and those different aspects, but it's been a game changer for me. Yeah. And it's been great for me because then he also hypes me up. He tells me, multiple times a day, every second of the day of how hot I am and <laughs> how good looking I am, how attractive I am. And that's something I personally struggled with was like with the way that I looked and having someone constantly in my ear hyping me up and telling me I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And then to know that he's doing that because he believes it's true, which is great, but also Fox. because he has like learned that sharing or celebrating other people doesn't take away from your own wins. For me, that's such a cool full circle moment to realize of, hey, because you showed up in this way, he showed up in this way and then was able to help you with this thing that you've struggled with. And he might not even know that. And that's something else of just speaking on things of, hey, I struggle with this. <laughs> this might be helpful if you do this. Um, kind of off topic, but in the same realm there. Yeah. I mean, and another thing that's off topic Gentlemen, if you know that you're dating out of your league, you know that this is the top of the mountain for you. You are not going to get any prettier, any more intelligent, any more X, Y, and Z. This is going to be the best mother for your future children. You know this to your core. I encourage you to not screw it up, to <laughs> show up and to put your best foot forward every single day. I knew that very quickly. I knew that I was, this was the, this was my mountain. And if oh I screwed this gosh. up, I was going down and I was only going to go down. There was no more up for me. I knew that this was my pinnacle. This was my superstar. This was my love of my life right away. And my so lommel. my lommel, yeah, <laughs> according to, to Max tuning. Um, and so, yeah, just if, if that happens to you, don't screw it up. It's, it's that simple. <laughs> just be better. <laughs> um, so within that, uh, the last few things I want to say here is um, like another thing that helps me within comparison is I have fallen short and not reached my potential before. And that feeling is the fucking worst. And that motivates me enough in regards to like, here are techniques to help you with comparison. Feel what it feels like and then realize you never want that feeling again. Um, doing the work and choosing your heart is one of you can live a life comparing yourself to others. And like Alex mentioned, living in the shadows because you don't want to possibly fail or have these things. Or you can choose the heart of confronting these beliefs you have about yourself, confronting these thoughts, assessing, having honest self audits. And that's still very hard, but that's a different hard that's going to push you forward versus is the other one that's just going to hold you back. Um, and being able to have that reflection as well as knowing like your effort versus expectations, like Alex had also mentioned of if you see someone doing better and you start to have that comparison, is that because you're maybe just not putting enough effort in to reach that expectation and then you're comparing yourself and feeling bad about yourself when you can use that in the opposite once you have that reflection as a whole. So um, another thing I wanted to finish up with was self-comparison. So I know that people often say like the only person you should compare yourself is to yourself, which I think that comparison can be positive in all realms. But let's say you're thinking like, oh, I looked so much better 10 years ago, or oh, the way I looked in college was awesome. And I don't look that way now. And then when people say the comment of like, you should only compare yourself to yourself, you're like, I am and I was better back then. Um, and some tips on that is don't romanticize it. I talk about this within prep a lot. And people ask me how I transition out of prep quote, so easy. 
It's still very hard, but it is something that I recognize the things that can be romanticized within a prep, and I don't romanticize them. I'm very honest about those aspects, and so I don't yearn always for that smaller body because I know what happened for that. Or let's say you're a mom and you're like, well, I had kids and then my jeans don't fit and I feel bad about myself and this person did this. All right. Well, also recognize bodies are meant to change. And it's very helpful to realize what's in your life now because of that. So being able to, again, flip the script, flip the way that you're thinking, train your brain, rewire it to be able to look at the full picture. These are coming from, again, when you have those thoughts, you need to think, Are the stories that I'm telling myself true? Does this hold weight? Is this helping me? So if you're having those thoughts, truly being able to look at the situation, we even talked about this with a few clients of um, possibly not getting to the physique goals that they imagined for themselves. But during that time frame, they still saw great results, but maybe they got three promotions and work and then also started a family and did these other things. So looking at the full picture can be very helpful. Um, And then looking at then versus now, what's changed and being able to, again, see the positives in that, the gratefulness list, those affirmations can be very helpful. I just wanted to touch on that before we wrapped up. Yeah. And and in the comparison to self, more often than not, you're going to romanticize the uh, like how good it was previously, especially the further back you go. It's like 30 years ago, I was this. I was in the best shape of my life. And it's like, were you? And then you pull up a picture and it's like, no, you weren't. You look about the same. Like the reality is, is that you can like your mind is just going to remember the good and, and probably ignore a lot of the bad. And you and also you get to create the narrative of what that was in the past as well. Like you get to create what that is when you're telling that story to yourself or to a person that you're explaining something to. So understand that if you're thinking 20 years ago was so great, it may have been better, but it was probably not this like exponentially better aspect than what you are at the immediate moment, unless you've just had this like, you know, crazy shift in in life or what have you. And I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's specific to examples, but for more often than not, that's the case. And you have to take a responsibility. Maybe you were in the best shape of your life 20 years ago, but you made the decisions or the life circumstances happened that you're not in that. Doesn't mean you can't get back to that, but it's also something that you can't expect yourself to experience life and not change. That's the point of life is to change. And sometimes it's the shape of our body. Sometimes it's our mind. Sometimes it's our landscape, our community, whatever it may be. But if you're sitting there and just drowning on, I was in the best shape of my life at this time. All right. Well, what do you have now? If that's not what you want, then look at what you need to get to to get back to that point and make it happen instead of sitting there comparing, comparing, comparing. And that's your life. Because again, Who wants to hang out with someone who just constantly talks about the past, constantly talks about how things were better if they're not going to change anything or do anything with that? Cool. Bada bing, bada boom. Do you have any last words or any Alex wisdom on comparison? Um. I think the the aspect of just self auditing, understanding where it's coming from, why it's there, is going to always be important, and not getting too caught up in the aspect in which just taking it at face value. I think that looking at it of just face value and and taking whatever the immediate reaction thought is 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 doing yourself a disservice as well as probably putting you in a pretty negative headspace. Once you're able to you know, get through those thoughts and and dig into why they're happening, the better off that you're going to be. So I think that's the most powerful thing to take away from this episode. Yep, honesty with yourself and having that self-awareness. But hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We enjoyed filming slash recording it. Um, And it's always great for me personally because I feel like sometimes I do learn more things about Alex in these conversations or he shares things that we haven't previously talked about, which is so freaking cool for me. So thank you for sharing um, and being vulnerable. I know that we're both working on it. And that's something else within comparison and the highlight reel. And we've talked about it a few times on the podcast and the YouTube that we want it to be a highlight reel and the quality that you are getting of all of this production. But we want to share those honest moments to show you life isn't always perfect. Life isn't this this exact square that you're seeing of us. So being able to share more of what's happening in our life is also 
hopefully helping you see that there's way more to the story and there's more to be told and more to understand. And that's always the case with anything online or basically anything you compare yourself to. And for example, the recording of this episode, I was an hour late to, and it was solely because of my own doing. So it's not like it was, you know, it looks perfect here, but we're an hour late for the entire day. We have a lot of things going on and it's just, you know, poor planning on my end. So it's certainly not perfect. Yeah, but life's not perfect and we learn and grow from it. So uh, thank you guys for joining us and we'd love it if you, I was about to say give it a thumbs up, but if you are on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you're listening to it on a podcast platform, give us a review, um, share it on your story, share it with friends that you think it would be very helpful and we'll catch you in the next episode.